Hey, YouTube. Well, I thought I'd come in here to talk about, uh, I want to talk about gay men in church. Now, I know this is a recurring thing with me. <laughs> it's a recurring thing with me. I am so happy. After you be, after you come to faith, it's like something just inside of you. That just becomes your life. So, gay men and church is going to be a theme probably for the rest of my life. I don't know that I'll be going into the buildings for my whole life, but I always care care about uh, gay men's experience with God. I think people go because a lot of people they ask that they say, "How in the hell can these gay these gay men?" They're constantly talking about them in the church. In the church, why would they even go there? Oh my God! They just say these horrible things about them. How can they just sit there and even give them their money? Oh my God! And then, girl, I couldn't even see myself getting on the stage and singing for these people after they just gave an hour and a half sermon about how evil I was and how I was going to hell and how God hates me and and I and I'm I'm the reason that Sodom and Gomorrah fell and. It's a reasonable question, really. And, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm fortunate. I get to go to a, a church where predominantly homosexual people. But I know that's not everybody's experience. I know that many places don't they just, just don't have that. It's not an option. And a lot of, I've encountered a lot of gay people who won't go to a, a predominantly gay church. They think we, we are we are playing with the, you know, we, we are playing with the, the Bible or something. And this thing, there's all kind of reasons, I guess. But the primary reason people go to church is they, they're going to get closer to God. They're searching for God. So a lot of times, that's, it requires sacrifice. Sacrifice, dealing with people. It's a sacrifice. But we are people. We are people. So for, for to, to say that part of being a human being is, is, is the curiosity about where the, the origins of life, about where we came from, they're normal things. Can I have a relationship with God? Can God, God change some of these dysfunction in my life? It's normal. We pursue God just the same way they do. You know, it, it frustrates me because people are so willing to just hand over their, their, their relationship with God to these people, these straight people who hate them. Like they have some kind of upper hand and it's, it's just it's just caca. We have the same desire as they do. To know the, to know the Lord, so... I think it's an interesting subject. They have all kind of names for us, <laughs> the gay people. <laughs> they call us church queens. And they call us, uh, this is my favorite, current, silent sissies of the pew. <laughs> silent sissies of the pew. So anytime you have any kind of church drama, I do write. My, my book series is called Love and Gospel Music. I wrote four books in the series. And of course, it's all about the relationship with gay men. Well, with that, it's more music, but uh, gay men in his church. This goes back throughout history. And my answer is, even if you, I mean, you don't understand why we go to church. We go to church not to find people. We go to church to find God. And many times, the thing that they do at church, that, that drum beat and that, 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 that quick, it, hey, glory, that quickening and that yelling, the, the 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 plateau it takes you to people some people call it foolishness but some people call it worship getting to that place where you are hugging the wall or you are tap dancing in, in the aisles that high I'm telling you right now but from I know both sides that high is better than drugs it is I'm sorry it, it just is it is what it is why they do it if it, it ain't no good why they do it so Anything that's going to promote me getting to that level of where I feel connected, where I feel the presence of God in my life, is very it's valuable to me. So I think that's why people put up with the bullshit. Because th that feeling, that feeling that that connection to a higher power is worth what we have to put ourselves through. Uh, yeah, so you live in, you know, I'm from Indiana, you know, Ohio, whatever, Midwest, somewhere. You're not going to have the experience where where you're the majority of people. 
usually you're going to be a, a strong minority. But gay people make the church go around also. We get we get involved. a lot. I don't know if it's all straight men, of course, but my observation is most straight men that go to church are going because they have a position in the church. They go there because they have, they have power in the church. But as far as the, the average guy you pay in the audience, it's mostly women. Men leading, women following. But I don't know that, that, that uh, straight men are, so they certainly are not the majority in the church. It's mostly women. There are men there, and every every one of them is got a position in the church. So, you know, they made it a career out of it. But um, gay men, I mean, we're, we're creative. We're, we're musically. I don't know what, what, what that connection is or why. Because it shouldn't make a difference because you have a sex with a different kind of person that automatically makes you able to sing and perform, dance, and do all these things that we, are, we seem to have an aptitude for. I don't know what that is, but we are definitely broken into the body of, of the Spirit of God. It's the truth. Took out, take the gaze out of the church, take the soul out of the church. So... I do feel for my brothers who are stuck in these places who are not. I think things are changing. I really do. I'm not just saying that because it's wishful thinking. I truly believe in my heart that things are changing. So we're at a curve here. Just like they used to treat black people. They didn't treat like people. They, we weren't even legally considered people. People had to evolve and come to that. And I think this is what the, this is a new civil, civil rights movement. But there, uh, a lot of things that are going to change society are going to to start in the church. So the church has always been the uh, the the, uh, the excuse. I can hate you only because God said I hate you. I can hate you. <laughs> I've gotten permission. So you ask the people, "Oh, really? What God came up your house and knocked, knocked on your door and sat down and told you that the Word said?" See, that comes down to the heart of it. Everything is the words that you people have, I shouldn't say you people, whoever, people have taken this Bible thing too far. You've made the Bible God, and that is the crust of the problem. Because the Bible says something that you accepted as reality. You've said a book that many of those people didn't even know each other. You, the Bible, some, you can go, one page will be, I don't know, whatever, BC. The next page will be, 400 years later, and you trusted the Catholic. You said, you know, I'm not Catholic. I'm Protestant, Protestant, Protestant. You've taken what they declare is the word of God, which is basically just a bunch of books that, that told a continuous story. They had to create a story. They chose the books to put in there. I mean, they put time in, in it. I'm not saying they just throw anything together. But a lot of the things that ended up in the Bible is because people were illiterate. So if you were, you could read, you were like a king. I mean, there wasn't that many people writing. There certainly were no people out there writing books and telling stories. So the ones that did, were able to write, basically because they were there and they could, they were not, and they were literate, they made it into the Bible. You got the whole New Testament, which is primarily Paul talking. Never even met Jesus. He came in contact with the spirit of Jesus years after he was dead. But they decided that. And they said, okay, well, we'll put that in the book. And then they passed it on through the years. And now we, I, I, I'm not going to say it's, it's black people. That's all I know about is black people, really. But uh, we have then now, now accepted that as being the word of God. We shouldn't even be calling it the word of God. We should be calling it 66 books written by 40-something, some odd people. It, it is what it is. Why can't a, a letter written by Paul to the Corinthian church, why do we have such a problem with, with that, a letter, that being a letter written by Paul to the Corinthian church? No, we turn it into, it's the word of God. It's in the word, it's in the book. How is that, how is that the word of God? Paul writing a letter to the Galatians. If Paul wrote a letter, that, that's not the word of God. You don't even realize that you're, you're, you're actually giving, making Paul a deity. So I think a big part of the problem, problem with, with people 
and understand and being because you have to un wonder how come these people and you, they're your grandmothers and your great grandmothers out that you know are sweet good people. How can they go up in them churches child, and cheer for the hatred of other people? How can they do it? Because the word said it. <laughs> and even when you said the word said it, out of all them thousands of pages, the word said it in two sentences. And then you go back a thousand years later and someone says something else. I'm not going to be convicted, convicted by the Bible. I can be convicted by God. God can tell me that you, someone you're doing, that's wrong. Don't do it. That's God to me. It's the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. That's what he said. The book said. I think the book is valuable. I'm not, I, I, I have to be very careful about what I say about the Bible because I just don't see why we have to turn it into the Word of God. I, can, I don't see why we, we can't just take someone's story and, and accept it for what it is. Okay, this is a book. This is David writing poetry about his relationship with his God. Person can do that today. But you, how did that become the word of God? So when they lunk all this story, all this stuff together and call it the, that is that is trouble. Anytime you lock something in a book. So in other words, the will got invented, you know, vehicles, planes, trains, but you you get your morality for when they had not, nothing but dirt, dust and dirt. Life has changed. Life is constantly changing. A, a book, when you lock something in a book, that doesn't change. So people who are so stuck on this Bible, Bible worshipers is what I, I, I consider them. People who are so stuck on this Bible, you have locked God in a book. Now, does it even make sense that God would stop talking 2,000 years? God would stop being God at some point 2,000 years ago. Okay, God got tired. Okay, I, I don't want to write no more. I don't, I don't get no more stories. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. Why would you be locked on something that happened 6,000 years ago when things are happening right today? What is God saying to you now? I mean, if we could ever get to that, Spirit of the Lord. Oh, I'm a believer, though. Don't, don't get it twisted. I'm a believer. And I understand people who go in and deal with these people and their abuse is just because they want to get to their Lord. It's natural. It's natural. It's what it's natural to wonder why do I have this eyeball? I mean, that's pretty intricate when you think this eyeball is shooting waves into the brain. I mean, I can tell just be moving his hand and just moving those fingers. That's because my brain is instructing each finger to move. You know, everything that I do is a design. People say, "Oh, I got my I got kidney problems." Well, what what how, who in the hell came up with the idea of you having a kidney in the first place? It's a design. It's God. I think people experience the Lord. They experience God. God touched me. God touched a lot of people. Change them. Go take them from non-believer to believer in a heartbeat. I believe God in that way. I just I just have a problem with with people locking into, into this Bible. Now, as I've said before, the church is the Bible. I mean, that's what the church is. Is their Bible belief that the, the church is built around the Bible. But God, there was a God before there was any Bible. I mean, God is not going to do it. The Bible, this is just these stories, things people wrote down. But the, the God was already there. There was still God. And I'm sure these people, even before they had a book, because most of the people in the Bible didn't have the Bible. They had uh, the Pentateuch, or they have certain parts of the Old Testament, perhaps, which they couldn't read, which is where the, these preachers came up. <clears throat> Because they, nobody else could read, so they had to basically come and read the Bible. That was their their, their job. Now, y'all didn't turn it into, this is a holy man. Everything he says is holy. And he tells you, the last night, God told me this, and God told me that, and God told me we need a new school, and God told me, just God just talking all the time. It's a complicated thing. But we'll stay involved. But I think, well, anyway, I'm all over the other place, but I think the thing that people laugh at, though, I laugh about, that spirit of the Lord. That's I think that's why we, I think that's why we go. That's why we keep going. To feel connected to God. So if it's, it's because some woman next next to me, I, who I don't even know, who probably didn't screw everybody in town, cause she has judgment against me, I would just have to ignore her. I'm not here for her. I really don't care about her. So we're gonna have to get to the point where we can stop hating on each other. 
and stop letting these people take your God from you. Honey, they ain't no better than you. When you give the God to the church and to the religious folk, you are saying they are better than you. You are saying you are, you deserve God and I deserve nothing. I'm not worthy. It's an internalized homophobia. It's internalized. You have just the right, much right to, to worship God as anybody else. Now, if it takes you a drum and a scream over here and some shouting over there and singing, if it takes all that to get you to that place where you feel the presence of God, my hands are crooked. There you go. Where you feel the presence. I used to, listen, <laughs> these guys, they make all these comedy shows and things like that, but for a long time after I got delivered, let me see, 15 years, stop doing drugs, just stop. Just there and, and then gone. And this is after going to prison 10 times for, for selling drugs. I went 10 times in 10 years. I lived there. To go call on the Lord and have my life changed just like that. <laughs> I don't care about these people. I don't I care about these goddamn people. That had told me right there. God is real. And so I'm constantly chasing their feeling. But I used to fall on the floor. I, I, I had this hateful clap and I would just get myself in the spirit. Now, I know people thought I look, I look stupid, a fool, yelling, clapping, quickening, all that. Oh, it was just wonderful. It was, it was like I was coming off dope and I was still on the uh, dope. It was making me high. But this high didn't go away. This high would last me. I would get recharged. So, sure, I put up with some, with some assholes just to, to, for that feeling. You know, something happens in, 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 in groups. Uh, but my dream would be the people in the future, we have our own churches all over the place. There are come, there are some. We have a fellowship. I ain't here to advertise no churches, but if you want, if you are in a place where <clears throat> you don't have the option or you never experienced people, gay people in worship, there's a channel on here called City of Refuge, located in Oakland. Go there. You can go to the services of, of Broadcast Live. And then we have all the back services there. That would be a good station if, if, if you're in the struggle. But uh, don't give up on the Lord. Let, and people, they want to call us uh, silent sissies of the people. <laughs> call us so foolishness. Child, we're just like any other human being. We seek to know our Lord. So, anyway, I'm saying that I would hope that someday we have churches everywhere. Just like black people got churches, white people got churches. And you're going to realize that those two or three lines people keep going to in the Bible, that ain't that 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 you don't need that. You, you choose whatever you want to choose from the Bible. The Bible is huge, huge, honey. That's why we got so many churches. If you don't come out of the Bible with love in your heart and realizing that your sins have been paid for and you are free, that's the big argument. No, oh, I got to be careful because I'm going to go into preaching now. I ain't no preacher, but. The answer, if you are struggling with, with spirituality, is in Christ. That's the answer. I don't know how we got it. The opposite of that's the answer. We keep talking about, well, you, that's a sin, that's a sin, that's a sin. Well, the whole point of the gospel is that you are free of whatever sin you had. I don't get no big arguments about, oh, that's a sin, or that's not a sin, or it's natural. I don't even give a shit. It's covered. Covered, taken care of. And that's what the devil don't want you to know about, honey. Whatever that negative spirit is that keeps you away from God, that's what it is. They don't want you to know about Jesus, honey. And it's so simple. The gospel is a simple thing laid out simply. You accept it, changes your world. So you can deal with a few assholes up in the thing. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so grateful for these cell phones. That, that situation with Kim Burrell a, lad, a couple weeks ago, that was testament that things are going to have to change. So you guys keep on filming. You see something crazy up in the church, film it and broadcast it everywhere. You know, and let's get ourselves together. But people being what people are, after they're through with us, they'll find another enemy. If you want to find an enemy, just go in the Bible. You can dig up some, some story, some three lines in there. Where you can hate somebody else. But there will be somebody else. You can believe that, honey. When they got through with, uh, I, I'm, I'm, they wasn't calling you African Americans. They got through with trying to to, to uh, demonize and make us less lesser people. Made it their full time job. They switched over to the gays. 
they're going to switch over to somebody else. So don't ever think you're so grand that you can't be touched by religion. All right. I, I know I done went on one, so I mean, let me stop now. What I don't even remember what the top of the subject. <laughs> Bye.